Hello Year 8 and welcome to your first lesson, your new booklet of acids and alkalis. Now just quickly before we go into it further, I want you to look up the word for acid and the word for alkali in Welsh and write the title in Welsh here on the front of your booklet. You may want to pause the video while you do this. Okay, so moving on, I'm going to let you know at the start of each lesson what you will need for the lesson ahead. So you're going to need a pen, ideally blue or black, to fill in your booklet. You're going to need another pen in a different colour so that you can show where you've corrected work or marked work. So it doesn't need to be purple, just a different colour to the one you're using to fill in your booklet. You're also going to need colouring pencils or wax crayons or felt tip pens because there's a lot of colour involved in this booklet. So there's going to be quite a lot of tasks involving you to colour, asking you to colour in. OK, so if you need to, pause the video here while you go and get these. OK, so on the first page of your booklet, you've got a breakdown of the things you're going to be doing during this module or booklet to help you be, reach the four purposes of the curriculum. So pause the video quickly and have a read through this. On the next page, you have this table called New Words. Now, as we go through the booklet, I want you to pick out any new or important words and put them here. Now, I'm not going to tell you what word you need to identify as important and put here. It's for you to take ownership of your own learning and decide what is important. But as an example, at the end of this lesson, I might think that the word alkali is important. So I'll put it here at the front to help me find it as reference and to practice spelling. I may also think that the word indicator is important. So I'd select it and put it here. So after each lesson, make sure that you go back through and select any keywords that you want to put here going forward. Okay, so for today's lesson, we have three lesson objectives. First of all, you're going to recall what each safety symbol means. You're going to understand that acids and alkalis can be dangerous. And you're going to make a red cabbage indicator. So just to start with, I've got a little taste test for you. Now, it's the fact that some foods contain weak acids and alkalis, and this changes the way they taste. So if you're lucky, hopefully you've got a lemon or a lime or an orange at home or some vinegar, and you can taste it with an adult's permission. If not, have you ever tasted a lemon or a lime, orange or vinegar? If so, what did it taste like? Now, again, with an adult's permission, if you've got some baking powder or antacid for your stomach, so stomach powder or bicarbonate of soda, you can taste that. It might not taste by much on its own, but what happens if you put it on your tongue and then taste the lemon or lime or orange or vinegar? Will it be different? So you have this section on your booklets. So hopefully if you've been able to do this or been able to do it from memory, you'll find that an acid tastes sour, potentially stinging, biting or sharp. These are all words that are used to describe the taste of an acid. Now, when you put something like stomach powder or baking powder on your tongue, you should find that it no longer tastes sour when you put the lemon juice on your tongue or the other acid you're using. It may also taste salty. and You'll find out why later in the booklet. So in this case, the stomach powder or baking powder removed the acid taste. Substances which remove acidity are called alkalis. Substances which are neither acid nor alkaline are said to be neutral. Now, this is a very important point and we're going to come back to it in every lesson. So although a number of weak acids are found in certain foods and drink and are harmless, many acids and alkalis are much stronger and are corrosive chemicals. This means that they will burn and destroy living tissue such as eyes and skin. So in experiments, whenever you use acids and alkalis, handle them with care and always wear safety glasses. Never taste or drink any chemical, be it acid or alkali, unless told to do so by your teacher. But you should know that in a lab, this is true of any chemical, not just acid or alkali. So I have a fun fact sewn for you, and I will have one of these for every lesson. Today's fun fact is about the origin of the word acid. 
So acids were first named by the ancient Romans. The ancient Romans liked to categorise things to help them understand the world around them. So they were early scientists and you can see my Roman scientist here. They called things like vinegar and lemon juice acidus, which means sour tasting in Latin. So you can see how this links into the activity we just mentioned. Now, as we moved away from Latin and started speaking English, we changed the word to acid. But it stems from this word acidus and meaning sour tasting. So, quick question. I have two bags of Haribo sweets. I have your Haribo Star Mix and Haribo Tang Fastics. Now, based on what we've just discussed, which of these would you say is acidic or has acid added to change the taste? Have a little think. Pause the video if you need to. Now, hopefully you said the Tang Fastics because they are sour tasting. They must have acid added to them. So on the next page of your booklet, you've got a table with different hazard symbols and descriptions of the symbols. What I'm going to ask you to do in a moment is pause the video and fill in what they mean. For example, on the first one, I've got skull and crossbones, and that means toxic. So it means it can cause death. For example, if swallowed, breathed, breathed in or absorbed by the skin. So I want you to pause the video and fill in the meaning of as many of these as you can. And this should be revision for you from earlier modules and year seven. So pause the video now. Okay, hopefully you've filled all this in. So I want you to switch to your other colour pen for making any corrections. So this second one is very important when we're talking about acids and alkalis, and it means corrosive. It means that it attacks and destroys the living tissue, such as skin and eyes. And if you look closely, you can see this block here that it is also eating through, and that represents a block of metal. So some acids and alkalis can eat through metal. So you need to be very careful when using them. The O with a flame above it, that is oxidizing. So it provides oxygen to make other substances burn more fiercely. The next one down is dangerous to human health or carcinogenic. So it causes allergic reaction, may cause cancer, may cause genetic defects, may may cause damage to fertility, an unborn child, and can cause damage to organs. So really nasty chemicals here. Next, we had flammable, which means it catches fire easily. Next, we had explosive. So it explodes due to fire, shock, friction, or heat, and catches fire very easily. Now, the last one with a very sad looking fish is environmental hazard. So it means it's harmful or toxic to aquatic life with long lasting effects. So if you have something that has this hazard symbol, you wouldn't pour it down the sink. It'd have to be disposed of carefully. OK, so next, I've got a picture of a car. It's got a flashing yellowy orange light on one side. So what is this car doing and why? Pause the video if you need a minute to think about it. Now, hopefully you said that this car is indicating it is flashing a coloured light to give information to other road users about what it is going to do next. So that means that indicating means giving information. So what is an indicator in terms of science? So an indicator is a substance. It changes colour depending on the substance or chemical it is added to. The change in colour can tell you something about what it is added to. And this information is what makes it an indicator. Now, you may have noticed that when you're cooking your vegetables or boiling them, the colour often comes out. The red cabbage extract is the liquid you get when you boil a red cabbage in water for a few minutes. And this liquid is an indicator. Another example of a non-chemical indicator is traffic lights. You have three different colours that it changes between to give you information about the situation. So it indicates to you whether it's safe to go, i.e. green, whether you need to consider stopping, 
yellow or amber, whether you definitely need to stop and not go red. So it indicates to you some information using different colours. So next in your booklet, you've got a description of the apparatus for making red cabbage indicator. So have a read through this and pause the video if you need to. Next, you've got a method or plan for making, the red, making and testing the red cabbage indicator. Now, what I need you to do is to then pause the video and fill in time connectives at the start of each sentence. For example, in the first one, I put, firstly, take two leaves of red cabbage. So I want you to pause the video and fill in your own time connectives for all of this. OK, hopefully you filled this in. So switch to your different colour of pen to make any corrections. Now, as we go through this, you don't need it to be exactly how I've done it or in the same order. I've just got some suggestions of how I would have done it. So for number two, I'd have put secondly, add enough water. For number three, I'd have put next, boil the mixture. For number four, then allow the mixture to cool. Number five, after this, pour off the extract. Six, I went back to then. Number seven, I used next. Number eight, I used then. And for number nine, I used lastly, because it's the last step. So as I said, yours don't need to match mine, but they do need to be time connectives. Okay, next you've got a diagram of the apparatus setup and a little box that's empty at the moment says safety measures. So what I want you to do is pause the video and fill in some safety measures that you need to consider when doing this experiment. Okay, hopefully you've got your safety measures now. So we're going to go through some and if you do need to make corrections, remember it should be in your different coloured pen. So my safety measures were wear goggles, no eating or drinking, no sitting. If you were in the lab, you'd be standing and your stool would be tucked under your table. And no running. Now, you may have more, such as tie your hair back or others. I've just put a few as an example. Now, next in your booklet, you've got this table for acidic, neutral and alkaline. We're going, I'm going to show you a video of the red cabbage indicator first being extracted and then it being tested. When we get to it being tested, you will colour in these sections with the relevant colour. OK, first we've got the video showing how the red cabbage indicator is going to be made. And this will follow the steps you had in your booklets. So you take the red cabbage. You'll then peel some leaves off the red cabbage. You remember our method said two leaves. We're going for a few extra just to make it stronger so it shows up better on a video. But it would work as well with just two. Then tear the red cabbage into smaller chunks in a beaker. And this will help with the extraction by having it in smaller pieces. And hopefully if you do this, you wouldn't be dropping any around the side. It would all be in the beaker.
Next, I've got some water. I'm going to add that to the red cabbage in the beaker. Then going to safely light our Bunsen burner, remembering it would be on an orange flame, so with the gap closed here. Place the red cabbage on the gauze on the tripod top of it, in the beaker with the water, and heat it on a blue flame. Now you would heat it for a few minutes here to make sure it goes, with the occasional stirring being very careful. Once you've reached the time, you'll use tongs to safely lift the cabbage the beaker off with the red cabbage extract. Then get a conical flask and set up a filter with your carefully folded filter paper. Then carefully pour the red cabbage and the extracted liquid over the filter paper, making sure you don't pour over the top of the filter paper because then it won't work. It won't filter out the red cabbage solid. So you can see here, very careful not to go over the top. You can see it dripping through as we use gravity to filter it. Do this until you've extracted all of the liquid. And then you've got your red cabbage indicator. And that's Mr. Hancock is showing here. Label it so that you know what it is. It's using RCI for red cabbage indicator. Next, we're going to test the red cabbage indicator with some hydrochloric acid, which is an acid, some distilled water, and some sodium hydroxide, which is an alkali. So, as your method stated, it will be to measure out one centimetre cubed of these into their different test tubes. So remember, this is the video that you're going to get the colours from that you'll need to use to fill in the results part of your booklet. Then I'm going to use a pipette to move some of the red cabbage indicator into the test tube with the hydrochloric acid. And you can see here it's going a nice bright red. Distilled water stays purple and the sodium hydroxide which is our alkali has gone a yellow colour. So back to our results part now we've seen the videos so you need to colour in these test tubes with the colours you saw Hopefully a lot neater than I've done it here on the computer. So the acidic solution went red. The neutral solution went purple. And the alkaline solution went yellow. Now I've put slash green here because depending on how much red cabbage you use, sometimes it goes green, not yellow. So when you look at things online, if you choose to, you may see it described as going green in an alkali rather than yellow. So with the hydrochloric acid, the red cabbage turned red 
and with the sodium hydroxide, the red cabbage extract turned yellow. So if you do need to make any corrections here, remember to do it in your different colour pen and make sure you've got all of this filled in. OK, now I know that at the moment you're not able to go into the lab to do experiment, but it is possible to do this at home in your kitchen. You will need to ask an adult for help. And then I'm going to put this link underneath this video on your study zone, which will take you to a page with a video explaining how to do this at home and everything you need and written instructions. It explains how to extract the red cabbage at home and how to use it to test different substances and how to use it to make a rainbow if you want to use some chemistry to make some art. Now, before you finish today's lesson, there's a self-marking quiz under this lesson titled Lesson 1. Make sure you do this and submit it before you finish. And there's going to be one of these after every lesson, just a short quiz, so you can see how well you're doing and your teacher can see how well you're doing, just in case you need some extra support. And remember that you may want to fill in some keywords at the start. So thank you, Yue. I will see you again for lesson two.